Good evening, everybody, and a warm welcome to you. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for our midweek service. Psalm 100 and verse 2 says, Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him singing with joy. So wherever you are, can we just sing with joy together as we worship the Lord? Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Can you sing it? You are the sing. Yeah. You declare it. You are good. Yes, Lord. Say you are. You are. That's who you are. You never change, Lord. You are. Yes, Lord. You let the King of my heart. Shine my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. Raise it up, say, let the king of my heart. Yeah. 
Amen. Father, we praise you, we honor you, we magnify you. We give glory and honor to you. Father, you are worthy of all honor, you are worthy of all our worship, you are worthy of all our adoration. And we come into your presence this evening, Father, to worship you and to, to honor you. We give praise and thanksgiving and honor to you, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, for another opportunity for us to come into your presence, Father Lord, to study your word, to listen to your word. Thank you, Father Lord, because we know that you will speak to us from your word today in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Father Lord, for everyone that is joining us online today for our online Bible study, that their homes will be blessed, their hearts will be blessed, their hearts will be ready to receive the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just bless your name and we give you praise. We give glory and honor to you. We say be exalted in our midst today, Father Lord. Be exalted and be magnified and be glorified, Father Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you give us wisdom, understanding, and insight into your word this evening. We bless your name and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's another Wednesday, our online Bible study, and you are very welcome. And I am trusting God that we'll have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord as we go into His Word. Amen. So, like I usually say, I hope you have your Bibles, your notepads, ready to delve into the word of god today as you know we've been talking about succeeding financially this month of october so and that's what we're going to be talking about this evening succeeding financially and you know just talking about the fact that you know god wants us to succeed not just financially because of course in every area of our lives for me just you know success is doing things god's way so that's what I want to talk about this evening, you know, doing our finances God's way so that we can have success financially. If we're going to succeed financially, then we would have to be determined, of course, to do things God's way. And in thinking about, you know, succeeding financially, especially because of, we've been hearing the word of God concerning succeeding financially this month, one of the things I just, um, that just felt God laid on my heart see, um, a lot this month is the fact that Success financially is not just having a lot of money and having all the cars that we want and all the houses that we have and all the money we want in our bank accounts and saying, yes, wow, I'm financial. It's not just about what we have. It's about doing what God wants us to do with what we have. And success, the success for me is not having just a lot of money financially, but also even if you have just a little, doing what God wants you to do with it. And if we are faithful in just that little, God will increase us. Amen? So succeeding financially or financial prosperity is not measured just by the amount of things that we have. You know, being prosperous is totally relying on God as our source. That's prosperity, knowing that God is our source. Yes, we need to work. Yes, we need to have businesses. Yes, we need to have other streams of income. But we need to always know that God is our source. Not our job, not the government, not our family, no one else. But God is our source. He's our source of um, you know, financial um, success. God is our source financially in every way. God is our source. And we need to always look at God as our source. You know, there are people who prosper without trusting God. They have, there are people who in this world who have a lot of money who are not trusting God and they look like they're prospering, that they have, a, you know, they're doing well. 
but it's usually that prosperity usually destroys their lives. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 132 that the prosperity of fools will destroy them. So, yes, they have a lot of money, they seem to be doing well, they have big houses, big cars, there's nothing wrong with that. But they also have hardship, stress, marital problems, and on and on and on. So they might be rich, but it's costing them in other areas of their life. So if we prosper God's way, however, which is my idea of succeeding financially, the blessing of the Lord, as the Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord will make you rich and no sorrow will be added to it. So that's why I'm really enjoying the fact that we're talking about, you know, succeeding financially. And for me, succeeding financially is succeeding God's way. Because when God blesses us and he makes us rich, there's no sorrow. There's peace. So you enjoy everything that God blesses you with if you do things God's way. Amen. And the first step to prosperity or succeeding financially is recognizing that you are a steward of God's finances. That we are steward of God's finances. We need to recognize that we are stewards. And this is a huge difference to how the world views money. You know, the world encourages us to get everything that we have and it encourages us that we are, our own, you know, we own everything <clears throat> that God has, you know, that we have. But no, God has made us stewards over our money over our finances that's what we should we need to recognize ourselves as as stewards over our finances you know the word always says get all you can and can all you get you know just keep it to yourself as long as you're okay that's selfish but with god when we see ourselves as stewards we'll be able to manage our finances and succeed at in our finances the way god wants us to amen but it's not, and it's not up to us to pick and choose what we do with our finances. If we are stewards, if we realize that according to the word of God, which we are going to be looking at, that we are supposed to be stewards, then of course now we realize, okay, if, I, if, if I'm just a steward, then I need to know how God wants me to handle my finances. And God has a plan for your life, including succeeding financially. I mean, not just financially, in fact, in every area of our lives. That's one thing. God is the God of success. There's no failure in God. So God doesn't want us to fail financially or in any area of our lives. And we need to start from a position of stewardship and let him be the owner. And of course, when that is the case, we're going to be blessed, blessed, blessed and blessed. Amen. So what is a steward? Steward is the word for a manager of a house or an estate. So that means you're, you know, the steward is not, he doesn't own it, but he's given the care of it. So the steward takes care of the house or the, you know. So when we think of stewardship to our finances, we, see, we realize that, oh no, I don't own it. I'm just a steward over what God has blessed me with. And you know, First um, Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So if we are stewards over our finances and we recognize God is our source, we are stewards over our finances, the most important thing we need to realize is we need to be found faithful. So God expects us to be faithful in our finances. God expects us to be what? To be faithful in our finances. He expects us to, you know, um, a few years ago, about a couple of years ago, actually, actually, I was just, we're just, you know, flipping through, um, YouTube and this, um, I can't even remember his name, a man of God was preaching and he said that he always has a lot of people come to him and say, well, I give in church, I give my tithe and I still don't seem to be doing well. I mean, and you know, the Bible promises that if I give my tithe, if I give my offering, I'll be rich, I'll be successful. So what's going on? And as soon as he said that, you know, actually I got interested. I said, yeah, what's going on? And he said something. He said, but what we don't realize is even, yes, God expects us to give our tithe. God expects us to honor him in our offering. And, you know, but we need to be good stewards over our finances. And that's where a lot of Christians are missing it. And I thought, oh, wow, you know, that really, you know, picked my interest. So let's look at Luke chapter 16. And we're going to be reading verses 10 to 12. Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 12. It says, he who is faithful 
in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in, un in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? I'm going to read that again. It says, he who is faithful in what is least. So it's what you do with the least that will show what you will do in much. Since he who is faithful in what is least is also faithful, also in much, faithful in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. It's just that this, if you're unjust in what is little, that's the same way. You can say, oh, it's just because it's little I'm behaving like this. When I get much, I'll be better. Mm -mm. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? So that means there's actually a difference between unrighteous mammon. So God expects us to actually be, so don't just say, oh, it's just money. God doesn't care. No, God cares. He wants us to be faithful. Amen. And he says that if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? We are steward of his things, of God's things, and we are stewards of God. You know, God does, you know, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to read something, an, an ex, ex, excerpt from somebody's message. It says, God does everything based on this principle. That's the principle of being faithful in the least. Amen. You know, like we said in Luke chapter, it says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also in much. So it says, God does everything based on this principle. He gives you a little Sees what you do with that. So that's how, you know, that's God's principle. That he'll give you a little and you'll see how you do with that little and see, yes, okay, yeah, I can trust that with much. I can trust him with a little more. Amen? So that's a principle. It says God does everything based on this principle. If you're going to be, and it says here, if you're going to be a smart leader, you do things exactly that same way. If somebody looks like they have got a call on their life and maybe you could use them, give them a broom for outside. And in brackets, I've said, I'm not talking about demeaning them. Just give, you know. So if somebody says, why? Not just can they sweep. Will they sweep where you told them to sweep? The way you told them to sweep? When you told them to sweep? If they had a better idea, if they went online, and Googled sweeping and decided that they, they, they got it in their spirit, a better way to do it. Do not give them anything else. Don't you do it. You will regret it. Why? Because if they won't listen with the broom, they won't listen with the microphone, they won't listen behind the keyboard, platform, etc. Many people don't believe that they be, many people don't believe that. They believe you give me something important and I will rise to the occasion. No, you won't. Because according to Jesus, you will do exactly what you did with the little thing. Amen? And, you know, just listen to that. I just applied it. I just want us to apply it to finances. That if we want God to trust us with more, if we want God to give us more, then we need to do what God wants us to do with the little that we have. So if you're earning just 50 pounds or 20 pounds or... 100 pounds, 500, no matter how much it is, are you doing what God wants you to do with that right now? Are you managing and stewarding it according to God's way? If you want God to increase you, then we need to look at, am I doing what God wants me to do with this? Am I being faithful in the least so that it can give me more? If, you know, you have a job, <clears throat> it's, you know, a menial job and you're trusting God for more, are you doing, or you're, you're thinking, oh, let me wait till I get more. Let me wait till I get my million before I start doing what God wants me to do. You know, if I get my million, then I'll be able to know. The same attitude that you have with the least is what you're going to apply according to this principle with what you have with the much. Because if you think I don't have enough, the more you have, the more things that you will see that you want to do with that. Amen? And the greatest key to increase is faithfulness. So if we want God to increase us, then we need to be faithful 
in our finances. If we could once go, want, because as far as I'm concerned, the best way to succeed in any area of our lives is God to increase us and to add to us. So if you want, you know, you can succeed any other way, but if you want to succeed God's way, then you have to do things God's way. Amen. If you're interested in increase, then you need to be interested in faithfulness. If you're faithful with a little, then you'll be allowed to handle much. That is increase, and that is the and the key is faithfulness. So if you are faithful in little, if you are faithful in what we have right now, even if you're a millionaire and you have everything, still be faithful in that. God will add more to you. Amen. Faithfulness. And also, what's faithfulness? Faithfulness is being stable, secure, trustworthy, reliable. Amen. If you're faithful, you can be counted. Also, can God count on us to do what he wants us to do with our finances? That's faithfulness. So we need to look into the word and say, Lord, what do you expect me to do with my finances? What does the word of God say about my finances? What is God expecting me to do? And one of the things that we honor, uh, one of the ways we are faithful in our finances is just honoring God. With what, I mean, Pastor Tony has just spoken to us, I can't even forget that, especially I think the first time we started this um, this series, he spoke to us about, you know, honoring the Lord with our tithe, seeking for the kingdom of God. Those are the, some of the ways that we make sure we're doing things God's way. Amen. And God cannot bless unfaithfulness. He cannot promote unfaithfulness. It can't add increase to unfaithfulness. So if we're trusting God, if we're looking to God for increase, and we say, Lord, increase me, I want to succeed financially. We need to be faithful in each step, wherever we are, wherever we are financially, we need to be faithful. We can't be looking to, oh, when I get more, when I get more, when I get more. That more would almost, even if you get the more, your attitude, because it's, by, it's the heart. If you're, if in your heart right now, you're only hurting a little, and you can't honor God with with that little in, in, in your heart, then when you get more, <laughs> you're not going to be able to do that. So you need to just change your heart and allow God to change your heart and do things the way God wants you to do you right now. Amen? Before you get the more. Amen? So yeah, God cannot bless unfaithfulness. He cannot promote unfaithfulness. And he can't add increase to unfaithfulness. So we need to be determined that we are going to be faithful. Amen? And that, because that will be violating his own word, and God can never ever violate his word. If God doesn't act out of pity, he acts out of his word. He's not going to say, Well, oh, I feel so. No, this is his word. What, so, what does the word of God say? Let's do things God's way. And that's the point of our confession this year that we're going to do things according to God's word, God's way, and God's will. Amen. And it will be foolish on his part to, give in, to keep on increase, increasing our resources. When we don't, when we're just going to waste it and not do what he wants us to do with our finances. Amen. So, and it will be foolish on his part to give increase, to keep increasing resources to somebody he knows is going to waste them because of what they have already done. So God, if God notices that we're not doing what he wants us to do with our finances, even as, a, even as parents or as leaders, if someone is not doing what you want them to do with where they are and you keep on promoting them, you're not going to help them. Promotion doesn't make somebody responsible. It's them being responsible that makes them, you know, fit for promotion. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to make them a leader so they can be responsible. No, they have to prove that they can be responsible before you promote them. So God is not just going to promote us because we're going to be, you know, when, oh, well, let me promote them. They will be responsible. No, we need to prove ourselves, amen, in the little before he can promote us. In any way, especially financially, as we're talking about finances. Amen. And God rewards faithfulness. God was he rewards faithfulness. Let's look at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to be reading from 14 to 30. Matthew chapter 25. Say, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants, that could be stewards and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. So it was 
He was given only five, but he did well with the five and produced more. Amen? Verse 17. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. Wow. For he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. He didn't do anything with it. He wasn't faithful. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had five, he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. That's what we've been talking about. Because he was faithful over a few things. The master said, I will make you ruler over many things. So that's the principle. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 22. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you deliver to me two talents. Look. I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Have you noticed that between the two and the five, I mean, God gave one, uh, the master gave one five and gave the other one two. But they got the same word, exactly the same word from the Lord about their faithfulness. So it's not just about how much you have, it's what you do with it. Amen? Then you who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. For his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servants, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. So God expects us to be faithful. Amen. It is important that you are faithful in little things. It's a key to whether you get a bigger thing. Amen. How much you get and if and when you get it is based on how you're handling what you have got right now. So how are we handling what God has given us right now? In the parable we just read, he gave them according to their ability. Then he's gone and he said, occupy till I come. Take care of business till I come. So God expects us to do something with everything he's blessed us with. Amen. And talking about finances, it's his money. Our attitude should be, this is God's money, not mine. So I need to do what God wants me to do. It's what he has given me. Amen? So how are we going to handle the master's resources? The way he wants it done. To accomplish what he wants done with it. We're not just doing our own thing, but what he wants done with his resources. We need to recognize that we're stewards of God's finances. So it's not up to us to pick and choose what we do with our finances. It's up to God. And how do we find out what he wants us to do? We look into the word. So we need to ask ourselves right now, are we doing with our finances what our Lord and Master wants us to do? Are we faithful to tithe? You know, Pastor Tony talked to, um, spoke to us at length about tithing. Are we faithful to tithe? Are we faithful? Are we giving as commanded in the word of God? The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Are we doing 
that in our finances? Are we seeking first the kingdom of God with our finances? Are we putting God in our finances? Or are, are, we, or are we putting God first in our finances? Or do we take all of our things first? And if we have a little, you know, oh, let's over. Oh, yeah, that's true. I need to give to, you know, I need to give. Sometimes some of us, the only time we think of giving is, you know, at the, at the time of offering. You know, a few years ago, I was, you know, studying along the line of um, prosperity and just along this line of prosperity and, you know, making God priority in my finances. And I started, you know, I learned that, oh, that's true. You know, God, if I'm going to put God first in my finances, I need to be purposeful about it. I need to be, you know, put to put my heart at it. And so what I do is at the beginning of every year, when I'm setting my goals, I also set how much am I trusting God to give into the work of the kingdom this year. So not just do I set my own goals, I set goals of how much I want to give to the kingdom of God. You know, because I just learned that, yes, if I'm going to put God first in my finances, I need to be purposeful, I need to, you know, plan towards it. Amen? So, are we putting God first in our finances, or do we take off all our things first? And if we have a little left over, if at all, then we remember we need to give to the things of God. Are we purposeful about our giving? Amen. Let's look at Haggai chapter 1, and we're going to be reading verses 2 to 9 first, and then we'll probably we'll be in, we'll go to chapter 2, and then we'll talk about it. Amen. So it says, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? So that means they're living comfortably in their houses and the temple is lying in ruins. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You know, sometimes we need to sit down and consider our ways. What our, is God first in every area of my life? Is God first in my finances? It's just some, you know, once in a while we just need to sit down and, like he said, consider your ways. You have sown much and bringing little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves but no one is warm. And he who earns wages earns wages to put into a, in, into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to his own house you know from the, those scriptures i i don't know about you god is saying put me first put my own things first seek doesn't that sound like seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness amen and let's look at the part that you know that represents and all things all these things shall be added unto you and you know if you look if you read the book of agai and as once God spoke to them in chapter 1 in verses 2 to 9, they determined in their heart that yes, we've been putting God's things you know, aside. We haven't been you know, putting God as a priority, in the temple of God as priority. So they changed. They did consider their ways and they made a change. And as soon as they decided, okay, Lord, because you know, repenting is just turning and saying, Lord, I'm turning away from doing what I shouldn't be doing and I'm going to be doing what I should be doing. So they repented. And just if you look at a guy to 15 to 19, it says, And now carefully consider from this day forward, from before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord, even before they started, just because they made up their mind that, Lord, we're sorry, we're going to now do what you want us to do. Since those days, when one came to a heap of 20 efforts, they were but ten. When one came to the wine vats to draw out fifty vats from the press, they were but twenty. I struck you with blight and mildew and hail in all the labors of your hands. Yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. 
Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the laws was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn? As yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. Amen. So when they considered their ways and decided they're going to put God first, God said, I will bless you. And when God blesses you, he blesses you. Amen. Look at those scriptures. They were not saying they were not going to build the Lord's house. They were just saying not now. You know, it wasn't priority. It wasn't the, you know, it was not a priority to them. They were putting themselves first and their own things, which violates God's first principle of prosperity. So God said, consider your ways. Look at how you're living. Look at what you're doing. Look at what your priorities are. We need to put his things first. God wants to be first even in our finances. You know, we read in Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 12, about being faithful over little things, and then we'll be, you know, much more will be given to us. And it's what we do with what is being little that we're going to do, be, uh, do it with what is much. Our faithfulness will be proved in the little things and natural things and money. Amen. Verse, uh, verse 12 says, And if you have not been faithful in what is another's, in, an, uh, in what is another man's, who will give you what is yours? You know, if you look at the scriptures about tithe, it is not yours. The tithe is someone else's property. The tithe is not yours. And let's look at um, Leviticus chapter 27. Verse 30, he says, And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Whose is the tithe? The Lord's. It is not ours. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's the Lord's. That's what the Bible says. The tithe is actually the Lord's. So yes, you get it, and God wants you to be faithful and say, okay, Thank you, Lord. This is yours. And I'm removing what is yours out of the hundred. And I'm giving ten. The tenth is yours. I'm giving it to you. Amen. That's faithfulness. So the tithe belongs to the Lord. It is not yours to spend on yourself, your kids, or anything else. We need to be faithful with it. We need to be faithful stewards over our finances. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can be faithful in managing and stewarding our finances to honor God. Amen. So I hope I've blessed you this evening. Like I said, you know, we need to come to a place where we consider our ways. If we want to succeed financially, we need to realize that God is our source. And as he is our source, we manage what he has given us according to the word of God. Amen. And just um, before we go, I want us to look at... Uh, a scripture in Philippians, which is a very, very popular, uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. It says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I really, really love that scripture. I know it's very popular, but I love it because it says, and my God shall supply all your needs. It's God that supplies all our needs. So no matter what is going on in the economy, no matter what is going on out in the world, just know that God said he will supply our needs. Not according to the economy, according how he does it. I haven't got a clue. But I know he does it. He's faithful. It says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, let's look at uh, the New Living Translation um, <clears throat> in that same scripture. It says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Amplify says, And my God will liberally fill to the full your every need not according to this world. So don't look at the economy. Don't let fear come into you because of what is going on in the world. Just trust the word of God. Trust that, yes, he will supply all your needs. How we will do it, 
trust me, we will come by it faithfully. And, you know, how you will do it, we might not know, but God is faithful. If he said he will supply all your needs, God is our source. And if we trust God that he is our source and he can never, ever fail, then we'll be able to faithfully do what he wants us to do with our finances. If he says give 10%, you just give it because you know it's not yours anyway. And if, you know, God can bless you, you know, God can give, give it to you. God can bless you more than you can ever imagine. And so that's where the start point, actually, of being faithful is realizing that God will never, ever fail you. You can trust God that he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Just before we go, I, that's one of the things that set me free. I mean, what, I, at one point I sat down and I said, Lord, I know that, you know, I used to argue about tithes and giving like, well, does God expect me to give when he doesn't even cover what I need and all of that? But the more I heard the word, one day I just sat down and said, Lord, especially when I read Leviticus chapter 30, that, you know, there are 27 verse 30, that the tithe belongs to the Lord. I said, yes, it's yours, Lord. But I don't know how I'm going to manage with, without this 10% that you want me to give. And, you know, one of the scriptures that God used to, you know, help me was, which is very strange, was the scripture where Jesus fed, you know, the multitude, the thousands, with, you know, just a few fish, um, loaves and fishes. And what God taught me from those scriptures, from that scripture was, if he, if Jesus can feed those thousands with just little, that my, what I think is little, he will help me to make sure it goes further. And I just held on to that. And since then, I have never faltered at honoring God with my tithes. And now, by the grace of God, I give more than my tithes. But God has always been faithful. There's always been food on the table, clothes on my back. Amen. And watch this space. It ain't over till it's over. And I know that, you know, God is, will always, always be faithful to, you know, to supply all of my needs. I will never want Amen. I'm not a millionaire yet, but God has always been faithful and you will be faithful. Just determine that, Lord, I want to be faithful in my finances. I want to honor you. It might not look like I can cope. I can do it according to the word of God, but you are faithful. And, I, you know, it's a choice. I'm going to trust God. If I'm faithful to do what he said to do with my finances, then... You will meet me at every point of my need. Amen? Amen. Let's just share a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you, Father, Lord, for even the being faithful, we don't have to do it on our own. Because one of the fruits of the Spirit is faithfulness. And you have blessed us, you have made us faithful. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us to be faithful in our finances, not just in our, just in our finances, but in every area of our lives, even in our jobs, in our businesses, in everything that you have blessed us with. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us to do everything that we do with the spirit, that spirit of faithfulness, Father Lord. And as we do, we thank you because you will increase us more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us to trust the word of God. Help us to trust in God. Help us to trust in what he has said in his word and do, be doers of the word of God. Obey the word of God in every area of our lives, in our finances, in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we do, we know, Father Lord, that you will reward us with increase in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name and we worship you. We magnify you. We give praise and glory unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we've come to the end of our Bible study, and I trust God that you've had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord, in His Word. And I'm trusting God that, you know, the Holy Spirit will help us to be doers of His Word and not hear us alone in Jesus' name. And I'm trusting God. This is a year of, you know, elevation, supernatural elevation, and I'm trusting God that God will elevate us in our finances in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's honor the Lord with our tithe and our offering this evening. You know, all the ways that we can give is going to be on the screen. And, you know, I just want to, I just want to ask, 
continue to encourage us with that scripture in Philippians 4 19 that says and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus amen God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory so as we give this evening let's give knowing that God is faithful amen and is not telling us to give our tithes or our offering so that he can punish us or you know take away from us it's because he wants to bless us amen amen let's just pray over our tithes father we and uh, tithes and our offering father we thank you and we honor you thank you father lord for your you have blessed us thank you father because you empower us father lord to get wealth thank you for your favor your anointing father lord over our lives Pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you open our eyes to see where we can be resourceful, Father Lord. I mean, on Sunday, Pastor Tony talked to us about, you know, not just working for people, but from, you know, for doing other things and, you know, branching out and, you know, being independent. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you open our eyes to see the way that we can do it, that we'll be led by the Spirit into areas that where we can have income, but when we do, Father Lord, help us to be faithful, Lord, in our finances, to make to know that we are here, Father Lord, to seek for the kingdom of God and your righteousness in Jesus' name. Father, we thank and we honor you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, please, let's share a confession. I trust God for a year of unusual elevation. I will humble myself daily and stay radically committed to God's word, God's will, and God's ways, no matter what. As a result, I will shine brighter and brighter and reflect God's glory every day and in every way, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, have a lovely rest of the week, and I trust God will see you on Sunday for our Sunday service. And also, please join us on Saturday for our prayers in the morning. It's between 9 and 10. And also next Wednesday for our word service. Amen. God bless.